Now, we've spent plenty of time talking about the Defence Forces recruitment crisis in the past. They've set a target of 80,000 personnel by 2040, but with only 57,000 on the books at the moment, and they're struggling to keep all them, recruitment is running 60% below target. Now, one MP has rehashed an old idea to solve the crisis, compulsory national service. Former Nick Xenophon ally, now independent South Australia MP Frank Pangello joins me now from Adelaide. Good to talk to you again, Frank. A couple of things about calling good from... Good to see com, you, Chris. Com, good, a couple of quick points, key points about proposing compulsory national service is that, A, a lot of people, including a lot of people watching this show, would nod their heads and agree with you. But the second point is, don't we all know it'll never happen? No government, no major party would ever back this in again? Well, of course. Uh, I mean, I can't see Anthony Albanese, Richard Miles, or even Peter Dutton, for that matter, invoking the spirit of Billy Hughes. For, for, you know, but we need to start having this conversation and we need to do it pretty quickly because it's an unsafe world out there. We have tensions in our regions. But at the same time, this country cannot defend itself. And only last week, they announced billions upon billions of dollars in spending on machines of war. Now, these machines of war, we do not have enough personnel to be able to crew the ships, all the submarines. We don't have enough boots on the ground. Australia just simply cannot defend itself right now in a crisis. This country is rather soft and very vulnerable at the moment. We don't have uh, interballistic missiles at all. We don't even have drones. Uh, the Houthi rebels are probably better armed than what Australia is. Yeah. So we need to start having this discussion, Chris. We yeah. really do. And they probably find it easier to get recruits too. Now, you say let's have the debate. Uh, there are all sorts of steps and ideas you could look at, apart from having blanket compulsory uh, national service, isn't there? Were there some major incentives to get school leavers uh, into the services to yes. perhaps get a free university education and all the rest of it, maybe yes. opt in earlier even? Uh, that's You want to look at all those sorts of options yes. where people can actually get the yep. skills, get the benefit, as well as giving the country service. Absolutely. We need to put all those options on the table. Now, we know that there's more than 30 countries now that actually have mandatory national service. And many of these countries are about the same size in terms of, uh, uh, of, of Australia as well. But they are very effective in having personnel on standby in the event of some kind of a conflict. Now, we, we need to start looking at that because we know that there are issues with our defence forces. We, we know that more are leaving the defence forces than they can recruit. They are down in numbers. Their recruiting drives aren't working. Now they're talking, I mean, this is the most ludicrous yeah. suggestion I've ever heard, Chris, was uh, actually inviting foreigners to come to the country to enlist and then giving yeah. them citizenship. Good I mean, Lord, effect, good Lord. It sounds like you're trying to put together a mercenary army, like yeah. an Australian Wagner group. I mean, this it's is just shocker. ridiculous. Good, have Frank have a serious discussion. Yeah, good on you, Frank Pangello, for uh, starting that argument. I appreciate it. Spot on. Frank Pangello making a lot of sense there.